started already. Mm -hmm. I didn't start the other one yet. What time is it? 8.27. There we are. Oh, it's on. Yeah. We're live. On YouTube, anyway, hit the button on the Facebook and we'll be ready to go. We'll give everybody a chance to get caught up. So, good evening, good Friday night, good evening, everybody. Uh, preacher's campfire Bible study. Got the campfire going. And uh, we're not outside this evening. We were tied up doing a bunch of things today and just didn't have time to, didn't have time to get our fire the way we wanted it so we're, this is the way we're going to do it and that'll be all right next maybe next week we'll be outside with a fire going if it's not raining or anything like that or windy it did get kind of windy today too right so uh let's get over here so you're in the picture on the facebook there we're going to be uh second corinthians chapter four for while we're waiting for people to get on uh come online so uh to, a few things to just kind of briefly mention while we're waiting for people to get online is we're still doing our Sunday mornings online at 11 o'clock. Uh, we're still inviting people to be a part of that. We're still sharing and uh, liking uh, those live streams at 11 o'clock. So the good news is uh, in the middle of what seems to be uh, difficult situation as far as uh, as far as uh, the virus is concerned and how we have to change the way we do things the good news is we have found ourselves doing worship and Bible studies in a whole different way which the Lord seems to be using as a tool to get the gospel into the homes of people that might not ever come to church or come to a Bible study via the live stream situations. So praise the Lord for that, and we're going to continue to take advantage of that. So keep sharing and keep liking. Uh, let your friends know what's going on in your life and let them know what the Lord is doing uh, in your church. If you are uh, a, if you're a regular viewer of Oak Grove Christian Church here, online if you're regularly tuning in to our bible studies and our sunday morning uh worship time then we want to thank you for that and we want you to know that uh it, it you are considered part of the church uh i guess it would be the online uh congregation at this point of course always welcome to join us when we do uh find ourselves able to come back together if you're in the local area but you know there there are people and we're still waiting for people to jump online so i'm just talking about a few things uh, that are important but they're not part of the bible study but uh there are there are, i think the way i found the, our information when i studied the information on who's watching and who's not watching based on uh comments and some of the statistics that you can sh find on youtube and facebook is we have people from uh at least half a dozen states across America that are either tuning in live or watching at a different time what we do here on at Oak Grove Christian Church, which I think a, a few of those people, uh, we, somebody in the church knows, but some of the uh, many of those people aren't people that are connected with anybody in our church congregation. So that's to me that's a great thing because we're able to. Uh, be used by God to uh, get the gospel out and share the love of Christ and maybe do something that God would want done in someone else's life that we don't even know and that's great. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there is now an online congregation for Oak Grove Christian Church and many other churches around the world right now because there's so many people uh, so many churches that are on have an online presence now. 
And I think it's something to give God the glory for. Second Corinthians chapter 4 tonight, if you're just joining us, uh, we're going to uh, just kind of read through this particular part of Scripture, starting in verse 7, and uh, just kind of see what it has to say to us. And uh, I don't know about you, but uh, it's, 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 getting, uh, it's getting a little bit old, this virus thing. You know, and I think a lot of people are getting to the point where they're just getting tired of it. And uh, I re I've always, uh, since this thing started, I've always believed that at some point or another, if it lasts long enough, people are going to be more fed up with being shut down mm -hmm. and contained in their homes or on their properties than they are afraid of getting the virus. And there's going to be some. Uh, there's going to be some pushback as far as how long this is going to last. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. And what's going to be more interesting is to see what the church does in the middle of all of that. Yeah. Right? How do we react? Right? Because, you know, we, we have the same feelings and the same emotions as anybody else, believer or not. The question is, is how, how is the church going to represent the kingdom of God in the middle of everything that's going on? Right. Mm -hmm. how, how do we, re including, including, uh, and, and it's always been that way. It's nothing new. Yeah. I mean, uh, a preacher friend of mine, he knows who he is. He, he pointed out several weeks back when this first all started, he's like, Hey, th this doesn't, this isn't sending the church out. The virus is not sending the church out. It's Kurt Honecker, by the way, in case he wants to be mentioned, <laughs> but, uh, he knows who he is, but he's, he's saying, and I totally agree with him. It's like the, the church, the virus is not sending the church out. God sent the church out. Jesus sent the church out when he told the mm -hmm. disciples to go and make disciples. Okay. Right? So we've always been out. We've always been out doing our thing. Uh, the church, that is. And if, and if for some reason you find your, you say to yourself, well, I, I haven't really been out. Okay, well, maybe it's time for you to join the church <laughs> and do what the church is doing. And it's nothing nothing more to it than just saying you know what i need to do a little bit better so look here's where we are in chapter four or second corinthians chapter four uh the teaching here is uh teaching about being ministers of the new covenant ministers of the gospel everyone who claims to be a believer has a responsibility to carry the gospel throughout their life into the world that they live in all right we have a an obligation based on our own commitment. We've decided. We're the ones that said, I believe and I want to be saved and I want to commit my life to Christ and I want God to be my God and Jesus to be my Savior. We're the ones that said that, those of, those of us who are saved. So therefore, this uh, responsibility is something that we signed up for. Okay? We decided, yeah, I want that. I want to be a part of that. So when he's when we're teaching about this minister uh, ministers of this new covenant ministers of the gospel, it's a responsibility that comes with uh, a great deal of uh, I guess weight, really. However, every believer who's received Christ and repented and been baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of their sins, as is explained in the scriptures, is is given the gift of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit's there to uh, give you everything you need to be successful in being the church in any time virus or no virus mm -hmm. right and in, in, in any any part of life that's great or, or any part of life that's dark the Spirit of God is given to us so that we can succeed the trouble we have is we need to fun we need to learn how to function in what God says is success mm -hmm. in the kingdom of God, not what we think success in the kingdom of God is. Yeah. All right. So here we are. He's talking about uh, uh, verse. Let me just read verse one of chapter four in Second Corinthians real quick. It says therefore, since through God's mercy we have uh, this ministry, talking about the ministry of, of carrying the gospel, or presenting the gospel to the world. He says we do not uh, lose heart. See. We do not, let me read that again. It says, we do not lose heart. We don't get discouraged. We don't lose hope. We, we have everything we need. Mm -hmm. we're, 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 we're ambassadors to the kingdom of God. There's no reason for us to 
uh, shrink back or give up or lose hope mm -hmm. or lose heart, right? Look what it says. Uh, and uh, He goes on and begins to describe what it means to be this ambassador, this vessel which the gospel is, is conveyed to the world through. That's me and you. That's the believer. It's, look at verse 7 is where I wanted to read. I want to read a little bit of scripture tonight. Starting in verse 7, he says, But we have this, this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Mm -hmm. So whenever we get intimidated by the responsibility of being the Christian or being the church and, and carrying the gospel into the world, we need to remember it's like, okay, God does the work. We just submit. Mm -hmm. We just need to show up and be ready. Be available. Right? We need to, basically every morning we need to get out of bed Say hello to God, and then say yes, Lord. Whatever you say, whatever you're, whatever you're going to do, that's what we need to do. Mm. Be prepared for that, whatever it is, and 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 don't say, can it be something easy? <laughs> can it be something I like? Just, what can I do for you today, Lord? What can I do for the kingdom of God today? Right, and then watch what He does. If you're honest and genuine about that prayer. Right, mm -hmm. and 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 you wake up in the morning, in your heart, in your heart, you say to yourself, "Whatever God wants, whatever is for the kingdom of God, that's what I want to mm -hmm. be a part of today." And if you're genuine about that, you better buckle your spiritual seatbelt because it's going to happen, and the Lord's going to do some things, and you're going to be yeah. out of your comfort zone. You're going to your world is going to be rocked. You're going to be you're going to be joy full of joy, and 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 you're going to be broken at the same time because. When the kingdom of God and is going on and you and you're tuned into it, is it, is something to be experienced. Now look at verse eight. He says, "We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed; perplexed, but not in despair; persecuted, but not uh, abandoned; struck down, but not destroyed." And then he says in verse ten, "We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus." so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Hmm. Okay? So we, we all just celebrate Easter Sunday. And I hope it was great for y'all. But look what this says. He goes through a couple of verses, 8 and 9, and he talks about how the believer, the kingdom of God, and those who are part of the kingdom of God cannot be destroyed, will not be destroyed, will not be discouraged right it's 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 like it's like there's something there that prevents the damage that can be done by the things of the world because there notice that he's not saying we're exempt from hard times mm -hmm. he's not saying we're exempt from persecution he's not saying we're exempt from being crushed or perplexed mm -hmm. he's not saying any of that because maybe that day that you get up in the morning and you say, Lord, I want to be a part of your kingdom. And I want to serve you well today. Your will be done in my life and in my heart throughout this day so that someone will see the gospel. If that's your prayer, it very well could be something that God uses in a way that brings you suffering. Hmm. Brings you hardship or challenges. May not always be, but it could be. Because for the purpose not of uh, making you suffer, not uh, making you, he's not setting us up to fail. God never sets us up to fail. Jesus on the cross and his death and resurrection is proof that he sets us up to win. Mm. Because when we win, he's glorified. Isn't that great? Okay. So, so, so then he says, we always, verse 10 again, he says, we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed uh, in our body. And I have to, I have to, when I read that, I have to think about Jesus saying, pick up your cross and follow me. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if you feel that way, but that's, it's just like, okay, I have to, my sinful man, the man who used to be an enemy of God before I repented and was baptized based on my faith, 
that Jesus is the Christ, mm -hmm. that guy needs to die. And that guy was all about self. Mm -hmm. Everything in his life was about his own self. Period. He was the king of his kingdom that he built, which was a pitiful kingdom, by the way. And God said, I'm I'm taking that over. Yeah. Me, I'm just gonna if you want if you want to be a part of my kingdom, surrender your kingdom to me. So that's what I did. Now the world needs to see that in me. The world needs to see Jesus' death in my death. Yeah. For the purpose of seeing uh, the life of Jesus. Right? It says, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Hmm. So the key is that we're so surrendered to God and his kingdom that the Spirit of God will have his way in our life every day. Yeah. Every moment of every day. And when that happens, in the middle of persecution or abandonment or despair or hard times, hard being hard pressed, we're, maybe we're perplexed, right? Like how many people raise your raise your hand if you're perplexed because of this virus? Mm. Seriously, I mean, if you don't know what the word perplexed means, just look it up and you'll find out that you're probably per perplexed. All right. If you can say it. So, the thing about it is, is in the middle of those times when the world is doing things and we're uh, living through it just like every other human being in the world, people will see Christ alive in you because it doesn't knock you down. It doesn't defeat you. The church, the body of Christ, us believers, mm -hmm. we should be showing the world right now what it means to be a part of the kingdom of God. We should always be showing the world that. We should have already been showing the world that, but it should be really obvious right now because the whole world is suffering in some ways. Mm -hmm. Some more than others, but everybody is suffering and everybody's life has been changed. And the church should be shining brightly in the middle of it all and say, this is, this is who we are, this is our God, and this is what happens to the people who belong to the kingdom of God. Right? Yeah. And that's that's what he's trying to say. He said, because we, we have Christ in these human bodies, and we have the Spirit of God, we have Christ as our Savior, we have to be Jesus' hands and feet. Not, it's not something you go out and try to do. It's something that happens in you because you've surrendered to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Completely surrendered your kingdom. You don't have to try to do what God wants you to do. You just have to surrender to God. Mm. Surrender to what God's doing in you. Yeah. That's why you get up every morning and say, what are we doing today? What What are we doing today, Lord? Right? Verse 11 says, For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus. That means we're constantly shedding the old self, mm. letting, Jesus, letting the Spirit of God clean house in our hearts. Right, it says we're we're giving we're being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that His life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Mm. Right. So whenever whenever people see you, the believer, repenting, whenever the people see you, the believer, choosing not to do something that you used to do that maybe isn't really uh, hurting anyone else but you're making sacrifices because it benefits the kingdom of God. Hmm. And you're saying God and everybody else first and then me. Right? Then you're bringing attention to Jesus and the life that he lives in you. And the world sees the kingdom of God in a real way. Hmm. There's a lot of fake ways. There's a lot of wrong ways that people are presenting what they would call the kingdom of God. What they were they, walking around saying they're believers and this is what it means to be a Christian, but no, none of it has to do with loving God and loving people. Yeah, it has to do with promoting self, and that's that's wrong. That's not kingdom mentality, and those people need to hear the gospel and they need to re rethink it and repent. Verse thirteen says, "It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. With that same spirit and of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who Raise the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. Hmm. All this is for your benefit 
so that the grace that is re that that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Hmm. Notice, I mean, that's like a big long. It's like uh, see, fifteen. That was verse thirteen to through fifteen. One big long paragraph in my Bible, just to say that everything that happen, everything that God does, is to glorify Him. Yeah. <laughs> right. Every every blessing that God does for you is to bring Himself glory. Glory. And and not not only just from your lips and my lips, but your neighbors. Hmm. Right. Even when your neighbors say, "Oh, there's that couple right over there. They worship the Lord. They live for God." That's bringing glory to God. Yeah. From the lips of people that might not even be saved. Right? Mm -hmm. But when you act like a fool and you participate in the in the in the world in a worldly way and everybody knows that you call yourself a Christian, you're having the opposite effect. Mm -hmm. Which means you're not submitted to the lordship of Jesus in your life. Which means you're you you've gone back to sitting on the throne of your own kingdom that you built that you uh, said you surrendered to God and His kingdom. Yeah. So which is it? Huh. Right. So then we got verse sixteen. Therefore we do not lose heart. There it is again. That's twice. Therefore we do not lose heart. And the reason I part of the reason I'm reading this scripture is because right now in times like these, when there's uh uncertainty in the world and, and questions about what's going to happen it's easy for people to lose heart and what's dangerous is when a Christian loses heart when a believer loses heart they begin to get away from God hmm. and then Satan will start bringing up the question in their mind maybe God really doesn't care hmm. or maybe God really isn't hearing your prayers or maybe God's not real. I mean, it gets it gets serious at times. And Satan will come after you in these times because we are we can be really vulnerable when we're not comfortable. We can be really vulnerable and weak when uh, we're out of our comfort zone, or we we feel like our needs aren't met, or we are just suffering in in whichever way. And Satan will come at you in those moments. To try to pull you away from your faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. And pull you away from the hope that you have. And this Bible is telling us that the church remains strong no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I'll say this. And I've said this I don't know how many times in the past. In different Bible studies and different sermons. Times like these. When the world seems to be upside down. Or... Maybe maybe even in times where a loved one is sick and in the hospital or maybe your finances are in the trash or maybe you've just lost your job or maybe your 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 family has been broken up for some reason or another or maybe you're facing something that's uh definite like death, right? Maybe maybe you're facing uh some kind of some kind of trouble in your life. That is not the time to start opening up your Bible and start flipping through the pages trying to find answers. Yeah. All the Bible study that churches have been doing over, over the history of churches, all of the Bible study that you have been attending on Sundays and Wednesdays and, and, and in-home Bible studies and your own personal Bible study every day, that's all done so that in these times you, you don't lose heart. Mm -hmm. It's all preparation for now, for when things are hard and we need answers and want answers and we're looking to God and he's, he's already put the answers in your heart because you've had your face in this Bible, right? Mm -hmm. And when that's happened, you know what to do. You'll have to fix that. So here we are. Finishing up, just hit the restart. So here we are in verse 16, right? Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, right? So look what it says. Here, the thing about the, the, the virus right now, all right? 
and I don't want to make every Bible study about the virus because there's other things to talk about and other things studied in the meantime. Business as usual as best we can, which business as usual means we're going to study the Word of God and we're going to preach the gospel. And we're going to love people every chance we get. That's business as usual. Every now, but, but because we're in the middle of this virus pandemic and other things going on in the world that have always been going on, it's going to come up. But here's what I'm saying. It says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Verse 16, through, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. So those of us who are believers, those of us who have committed our life to Christ, uh, confessed that Jesus is a Christ, baptized for the forgiveness of our sins after repentance, and we received the gift of the Holy Spirit, that we've, begin, we've begun to live our eternal life mm -hmm. when that happens. We're already in living our eternal life. There's just going to be a transition one day when we leave this world. Yeah. One day, when, whenever it is time for e each of us to leave this world, or whenever Jesus comes back, whichever happens first, it's just a transition between what's going on in this world that we're living in now to being in the presence of God and his kingdom for, for the rest of eternity. And from this side of death, it's kind of a scary transition because we've never experienced it. But once we know and we have hope that once we get through that transition, there's no suffering, no pain. It's all God's glory and we're in his presence. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. so, so he says, therefore, we don't lose heart because outwardly we're wasting away. Mm -hmm. Everybody is in the process of dying. Yeah. Some people faster than others. And then he says, uh, uh, inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. That's what spiritual growth is about. Every day, we should experience something about God that makes us closer to Him. Mm -hmm. See, God is making the believer holy. Not because we're holy, but because He is holy. Yeah. That's sanctification. He's co constantly cleaning house, getting rid of the things that don't honor Him, getting rid of the, 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 the residue of the old self yeah. in our hearts. And replacing it with holy things. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we live in. And that's why it says we are being renewed day by day. Verse 17, and we're almost done. 17 and 18. For our for our light, uh, uh, for our light and momentary troubles uh, are achieving for us an eternal glory that for, far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes. Look, well, here's the key right here tonight, y'all. He says, that, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, because right now all we need, look, what is seen is like anything in this world. Anything you want to focus on, that's what's seen. Mm -hmm. But on what is unseen. So he said, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but as what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Mm -hmm. As, as class, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 right there, y'all. Faith is believing in what you can't see. Yeah. Right? You can't, you can't reach out and touch it. Right? So what we don't, what we can't vi physically and visually see is eternity after we leave this world. Now, we have plenty of vision of what it's going to be like right here. God talks about it all the time. Read Matthew chapter 5. Read the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says, here's what the kingdom of God is like. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like we don't know about it. And it's not like we don't have hope in it for it. It's just we haven't, we're not there yet. Yeah. So in the meantime, we got to be about the Lord's business. we got to be about the Father's business. Right? So we, all we got to do is just go out and, and be, be ourselves, be who God created us to be, but be ambassadors for the, for the kingdom. The, the, the brightest light in the middle of this pandemic and the middle of any other type of hardship that's been going on, the brightest light in this world should always be the church. Yeah. It should be, uh, you know... Uh, these lighthouses out on the beaches around the world, those lights are so bright because they have to shine through the darkness, shine through the fog, shine through any storm that's going on to save lives. Yeah. And that's the body of Christ. 
and those and it's crazy because some of those lighthouses are like not on shore they're like out in the middle of the of the water yeah and when the storms are coming up it's like i don't know how they're still there except for their foundations are stout and if we're going to be the body of christ right then we need to be just that mm -hmm. we can't shrink back we can't lose hope there's joy to be had even in the middle of the darkness in the middle of the struggling the frustration I think I think the confusion is slowly turning into frustration at this point in our yeah. society and uh, my question tonight is how are we the church going to represent the Lord in the middle of all of that so that's what I got tonight hmm. what do you think sounds good Jars of clay, y'all. Now I'm singing the song. Yeah. We're here, we're here to represent the kingdom of God. I mean, why else would... Okay, so why... Here, let me finish, Let me tell you this. Why Why else would... I mean, if, if Jesus died on the cross and his re death and burial and resurrection shows us that he's the Christ, and if we have God's promise that whoever should believe in that will be, have eternal life, then why is it that we don't just die and go and be with the Lord if we confess that Jesus is the Christ and we are baptized for the forgiveness of our sins after repentance. Why, why don't we just go be with him then? Because there's a great commission. There's, there's work to be done. God's got something going on here, y'all. Yeah. I mean, that's as simple as it is. There's a reason that we're still here after we're saved. It's not because we're not ready to be in the presence of God. God can make us ready in any, in any moment of any second of any day. It's because he has us here to do the work of the kingdom. Yeah. Because there's not everybody saved. Not everybody believes that Jesus is the Christ. we got to be out there presenting the gospel. We're ambassadors to the kingdom mm -hmm. of God. 11 o'clock, Sunday morning. Worship time, Oak Grove Christian Church here in Arden, North Carolina. If you're a member of the church, we miss you. The Lord bless you. Um, you, you guys know that uh, one of our uh, sudden prayer requests that is going on right now, I'm not going to say it because it's on the internet, but there is, there is a sudden and urgent uh, prayer need right now. It's pretty, pretty serious. If you don't know what that is, uh, get with me or Frank and we'll let you know. Should have been a, should have been a message sent out today about it. Nothing's changed. Just keep praying about that. Uh, pretty, pretty serious situation. Other than that, we're going to continue to press on and praise the Lord and continue to serve the Lord well, the best we can, in our quarantine, COVID-19 state of being right now. Feel free to send messages to us on Facebook or even YouTube. Feel free to comment. Feel free to ask questions, especially if you're not a member of our congregation here. Mm -hmm. If you're one of those people that are in one of the other states or somewhere in this state, feel free to try to contact us so we know who you are and we can kind of keep up with you and pray with you we love you the lord loves you sleep well represent the lord well god bless y'all